It makes A Court of Silver Flames look PG-13. Never read anything so horrific in my life. Screaming, crying, throwing up. It's making me feel like I want to be sick. It's the most grotesque thing I've ever read in a book. No, thank you. Jodie and welcome to a new video. So today I'm going to be doing a January wrap up and I haven't done a wrap up video in such a long time. I don't know how long it's been, maybe a year, maybe a bit less, but put it this way, it's been a while. So I'm a little bit out of practice with doing these, but we're just going to see how it goes and I'm just going to talk about all 12 of the books I managed to read in January. So I'm really happy with how much I managed to read. I definitely could have read more. There was like a week or two during that month where I pretty much didn't read anything at all. And I'm kind of annoyed at myself for that because I wanted to read, like even if it's just a page, like I wanted to read every single day and I just didn't. I went like multiple days without reading. So my reading has got off to a good start, but at the same time I have also been slumping a bit. I don't know if anyone else has been like the same way but yeah, it's really annoying because I want to read loads of books and there's so many amazing books on my shelves that I'm just itching to get to. So yes, anyways, <laughs> that is a different tangent completely. So if you would like to see all of the books that I did get to in January, then please keep watching this video. But I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm not going to go in any specific order. I'm just going to grab them and go. Um, so the first book I have is a poetry book, which was Soft Thorns by Bridget DeVoe. And I read this for a 24 hour readathon that I did and I think I gave this three stars this is like modern poetry and it's kind of like Instagram poetry and I don't use that term to be like insulting I just mean it's that kind of modern poetry with like the kind of quotes you'd say on Instagram that kind of stuff and that is quite often like on Instagram if that makes sense. But I really like modern poetry to an extent. This one I did enjoy and I thought this was like so well like done. The only thing for me is and I've said this in videos before is with poetry I have to find it relatable to really enjoy it and there was a lot in here that I couldn't relate to and there was some that I could. So again my poetry ratings always do tend to be in the middle at around three kind of stars because I just never really seem to find any modern poetry that I totally relate to. Um, a lot of modern poetry like seems to be about kind of like breakups and things like that and I haven't obviously gone through a breakup in a long time so it's not relevant to me. It's been a long long time since I went through a breakup that really did like badly affect me so I can't always relate to a lot of those poems and there were kind of a lot of those poems in here and there's a lot of trigger warnings as well for like really dark themes in this poetry book so I could relate to some poems and the poems themselves were all very very beautifully written. I just couldn't directly relate to some of them which is why I gave it three stars. So again I would recommend this if you're going through a breakup, if you are going through anything quite dark and if you're looking for a poetry book as well it's also kind of about self-worth and self-love those bits I really loved and there was some really really cool messaging in here so yeah I did really enjoy this and I gave it three stars I will probably pick up the second one because she has to know another one um but yeah it was just kind of like a middle rating for me just because I couldn't directly relate to a lot of them next one I'm going to talk about is like a collective like group of things because they're mangas so one of them was a reread the rest I was reading for the first time I've um, started waiting for spring so volume one was a reread for me I read this last summer and I fell in love with it I couldn't put it down and I gave it five stars and it became like my favorite manga I've ever read I just love anything that is heartwarming and really adorable and that's definitely what this is so I reread this and then I read volumes two to five I desperately need to get the rest of the volumes for this series it's just quite hard to get hold of them at the moment for a decent price so so I really really do want to read them soon before I forget what happened in these because I'm already starting to if I'm being honest because I've read so much since then. But yes I read five volumes of the Waiting for Spring manga. This is just a really like cute kind of friendship romance manga. It's just really really adorable. Uh, it takes place in a high school and we have our main character Mitsuki and she kind of ends up accidentally befriending these um, four basketball players and they develop this friendship but then she's also kind of developing a romance with one of the guys in a friendship group and it's just really really cute and like heartwarming and like the friendship's really cute and just like the day-to-day -day and like the little romance it's just a really lovely like series and I just love it so much it just makes me so happy so if you are looking for a good kind of romance like cutesy like manga then I would definitely recommend this series because it's just 
just so good. I gave all of these five stars, I think. And I just literally love this series so much. Okay, so next is a graphic novel, which I also read for my 24 hour readathon. And that is The Sad Ghost Club 2 by Liz Meddings. So I read the first one of these last year and gave it five stars. I loved it, found it very relatable. This is basically about people who suffer with mental health issues. So like anxiety and depression and things like that. And I can definitely relate to that. And it's just really, really nice. This wasn't as good as the first one, but I still loved it. I can't remember if I gave it four stars or five stars, but basically we have like ghosts. So this is someone who feels kind of invisible to people and like full of anxiety. And in the first one, they go to a party and they befriend another ghost. And then in this one, they decide to set up the sad ghost club to see if any other ghosts want to join and befriend them so people who are similar to them people who are struggling with the same things that sort of thing so we have that in here we're introduced to a third ghost as well and then at the end we have like a group of ghosts and it's just really really nice i just really really like this so again if you're someone who maybe struggles with anxiety or depression i would highly recommend these i just think the messaging is really nice i could relate to so much in here and i don't know it was just done in a really nice way and i love the metaphors in these graphic novels and this one was just so good as well so yes I really really love this one. I'm moving on to actual books. So I have four here that I physically read and then I read one on my Kindle. So I'll talk about the one I read on my Kindle first because this one <laughs> just... <laughs> How am I even going to explain this book? So the book that I read on my Kindle is called It Ain't Me Babe and I think it's by Tilly Cole. I'll put a picture of it here. So this is a really, really dark romance and essentially in this romance we have this guy who is mute. He doesn't speak. He can't really speak. The only people he can speak in front of are his father and his best friend. And then we have this girl who's in a cult. So at the start of the book we have this perspective from the guy when he's young and he meets this girl who's in this cult through the fence in these woods and the reason he's in these woods is because he is part of this um, biker gang and his father runs it and they're burying a body <laughs> and um in this like woodland way into the woodland, middle of nowhere and he wanders off and he finds this big metal fence and there's this girl with wolf eyes he calls it um sitting there like crying and he tries to talk to her and obviously he can't talk and he actually manages to get words out to her although he's stuttering and he's like you know completely bewildered by her and her fox eyes and the fact that he's actually managed to speak to somebody else she's like afraid but really intrigued by him and then his dad shouts him and she runs off and then he runs off and he's never been able to find this place again or ever forget her then we follow when they're grown up and he's now the president of this biker gang and there's lots of wars going on between like other gangs and all of this other stuff and then one day this girl turns up outside bleeding out almost bleeding to death outside the club and he immediately is like oh my god that's the like wolf eyes girl like that's her um and she like has escaped the cult and she has been brainwashed by this cult that everything from the outside world is bad and they're all evil, they're all sinners. Um, she has been kept separately from everyone in this cult because she's one of the pretty ones and she's a sin herself because she's so pretty and tempting to men and all this. Um, she has gone through some very, very traumatic things and there are so many trigger warnings for this book honestly i would not recommend this to a lot of people i'm still sickened by what i read in this book i have not stopped thinking about it since and it's the most grotesque thing i've ever read in a book and it will always make me sick to my stomach and although i understand the point of it in the book i still don't really think some of it was necessary and it was a little bit too fucked up for my liking it literally made me sick to my stomach like if you've read this book you'll know but honestly i wouldn't recommend this book because i just think it's too triggering for people and even if it's not it's just so horrific like I said I've never read anything so horrific in my life basically she's in this cult and these prophets are um basically people who've taken the bible and then like obviously like you haven't cults kind of adopted and took their own interpretations and made it something very evil and disgusting and it was honestly like I just it's making me feel like I want to be sick now just thinking about it um so yeah that's basically her backstory so she comes from this cult and she ends up here with him she recognizes him as well and then we obviously have this dark romance blossom from there so the romance in this book was really good and the reason that I actually started reading this book is because I saw a tiktok and it was if I can find it I will link it but honestly I don't know if I liked it or not so I'm not sure if I'll be able to but I saw this tiktok and it was like um saying you know when a gang 
steals like the girl and the guy's mute and everyone hears him scream her name and like that's the first time we screamed in front of everyone and that's what made me read this book is because like he's mute no one's ever heard him talk and then the moment she's in danger he screams her name and everyone's like oh my god he just spoke um so that's what made me read this book and the romance is really good and the actual story is so interesting like the whole cult thing and everything like that is honestly really really interesting like premise like the actual plot it's just the really grotesque and horrific things that go on in this book that really made me sick and also there's a lot of really um misogynistic kind of language in here although like at the start of the book you kind of get a glossary so all of the women are called i think was it bitches they just call them bitches but it's not like a derog derogatory term to them bitches is just what they call women and then there's like other things like phrases and things they'll use which sound really bad but like for them it's not it's like an endearing thing to say it and stuff um, and obviously they use term like old lady and like different things like this and like there's all these different words that they use so yeah i did still find the language like really cringy and i was just like okay like yeah um so there is that in this as well but like the actual kind of story is really unique and the romance is good i'm not gonna lie the smut level is very good as well um but it's the language and the grotesqueness of some of the stuff we're going here so yes i did read that book i gave it three stars i think because i did really enjoy the romance and I, the actual premise was so like unique but the reason that i couldn't give it a high rating is because of how horrific some of the stuff in this book is so yes just i wouldn't really recommend it because it was very very intense and very horrific but i still enjoyed the romance and yeah i gave it three stars moving on from that i read the traitor queen by danielle l jensen so this is the second book to the bridge kingdom and i listened to this on audio i gave this five stars i think or maybe it was 4.5 i honestly can't remember i should probably look up my ratings before i do these videos but alas here we are so yes i really really enjoyed this these audiobooks are definitely the best narrated audiobooks i've ever listened to the narrator is so good it's so captivating there's really cool sound effects and honestly like i just cannot recommend these audiobooks enough like if you're looking for a new audiobook or series or you're just looking for a really good series to start i would highly recommend this series it's so good it's basically a kind of main character who's trained her whole life to become this assassin and weapon and one day she's gonna marry the king of this other kingdom and then she's gonna murder him and take the kingdom for herself and her father so that's basically the basic premise and in the first book we have like enemies to lovers and like kind of all this stuff happens and then the second book i can't give any spoilers but the first book ends on such a cliffhanger and the second book was just so good this is absolutely action-packed and so intense and the ending oh my god towards the end i was like screaming crying throwing up like literally i was so tense i was like oh my god what is going to happen like what's going on and it really really did almost make me cry and it was just so good honestly can't recommend this series enough so yeah i really really enjoyed the second book as well i did try to start the audiobook for the third book but i'm not sure if i'm feeling it if i'm being honest um but yeah anyways the next book that i also read was elsie cova's deal with the elf king um so this is a married to magic novel so basically there's loads of different novels set in this kind of world but none of them really link to each other they're all standalones but just set in the same kind of like world if that makes sense but yeah this is definitely akatar meets for the wolf like if you put the two of those books together this would be their child like it's literally that that's what this book is um so this has like a similar magic system to for the wolf it's all kind of like plant-based magic and like herbology and that kind of stuff it's really really cool the magic system in here is so unique it's so interesting and i really really liked it um the world building as well is really good i did find it a little bit confusing but it was a really cool kind of like magic system and world we do have Faye in here we have other mythical creatures as well and then we have our main character who's a human but actually turns out to be this like special queen who like actually has magic so basically there'll be one human who has magic in this like kind of weird human realm that must marry the fake king elf king turns up not the fake king and she takes her as his bride and we follow her and him it's like forced proximity it's kind of not really friends to lovers but kind of friends to lovers um kind of grumpy sunshine as well and just really really good like this is just a really really good easy quick fun read it's nothing like amazing it's just really really fun i think i gave it four stars 
and I would definitely recommend this especially if you do like Actar and for the wolf it has just such a cool magic system and the romance is really good in here it is YA kind of romance but it's still really fun and I just really enjoyed this and I do have one of the other novels that is in this like series that I'm going to be reading soon but this is really good if you are looking for a book to binge then I would highly recommend this one then next we have my Patreon buddy read which was King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair so I really really love Scarlet St. Clair's Touch of Darkness it was one of my favorite reads of last year and this is my Patreon one and I don't know if you guys can tell how many tabs are in this book but I really really enjoyed this I gave it four stars I think in the end and this was just like a really really fun fantasy dark romance so this is a book that is filled with smut and when I say filled with smut I mean it makes A Court of Silver Flames look PG-13 like this book is filled with smut like it's not really a spoiler but like in the first like chapter or two we have like a lot of sexual stuff going on like from the get-go and I was just not expecting it um this book is just really really cool the main character is just like a feminist queen like she is like the term girl boss was made for her like because she is like she is funny and just amazing like she kind of hates men and she just constantly puts men in their place throughout this whole book and she is just so good like she knows her worth she knows her value she will put them in their place and say no like I am more valuable than that so, like I'm not here for you I do not need to take your shit because you're a man like it is just so good there are so many good scenes where she puts a man in his place and I was just like yes like oh it was just so stunning she's also really funny and witty the banter in here is just amazing i love the banter the sexual tension and the sex in here is incredible like five out of five for spiciness definitely world in here is so cool i love the whole vampires and witches in here i didn't realize there's gonna be witches and the plot twists i kind of did predict them i'm not gonna lie but at the same time i didn't predict it 100 percent but it still had that shell shock factor there are so many little plot twists in here that just blew my mind and i was just like oh my goodness this is a book you can totally binge read it is just so bring good it gets to it from the get-go honestly like the plot starts in like the first chapter like things move very fast in this book um there's so many good sword fighting action scenes as well which i friggin love they were so good i could vividly picture in my brain what they looked like they were just amazing and the characters everything in this book was just amazing like literally ignore the scratch by the way on my hand frankie tried to jump on me this morning and accidentally scratch me <laughs> yes this is just such a good fancy dark romance i honestly loved it i cannot wait for the second book highly recommend it did film a spoiler filled reading vlog for this book over on my patreon so you can head to my patreon if you would like to see that but i just really really enjoyed this book it was so good as are scarlet st Clair's books definitely recommend this one really really loved it and then lastly we have a new favorite romance which is it happened one summer and i'm pretty sure i did give this five stars this book was so good i flew through this book and i loved it so i had read one tessa bailey book previous to this which is fixer up and although i love that book i did give it i think like three stars just because it was very like kind of cringy and i did like it but certain things just I don't know like I think it was the word baby was used a lot in it and it was just grossing me out I was just like no it's not working for me like no no thank you um there was just little things I still loved it still binge read it but it just wasn't like the best romance I'd read and I read it against loads of other romances because I read like nine romance books in like the space of like seven days or something so I think I was like putting it up against other romances but I still loved it and like I said I never read any of the books besides that one so going into this I was expecting to love this more and I had very very high expectations and they were definitely met I friggin loved this I wrote a review on my bookstagram goodreads and on waterstone so I'll link it down below if you want to read it this is a a grumpy sunshine romance it's kind of friends to lovers and it is just really really good it takes place in a small seaside town in the pacific northwest so the setting alone was stunning i loved it i want to live there small town vibes with the sea yes please have a sea captain called brandon and then we have our main character called i've forgotten her name against the p i think piper so we follow piper and she basically is a socialite in la and she basically just spends her stepfather's money she doesn't really do anything else except throw like wild parties she has like millions of followers on social media and social media and partying and stuff is just kind of her life she has no like really meaningful friendships or anything all her friendships are kind of materialistic she hasn't had very good experience with relationships her longest relationship was for three weeks and the guy 
dumped her and said she's basically just like every other LA girl and all this. And yeah, people have been really horrible to her. I think she's this beautiful, like popular girl. She is very insecure and she just has like a lot of like internal issues and she's never really addressed them. And then she throws this party after she gets broken up with and she takes things too far and her stepfather's like, right, I'm sending you off to this town. This town is where her biological father was from who died like years ago and um he left a deed to her and her sisters this bar that he had there and her sister's like no i'm not leaving you to go on your own like i'm coming with you so they go to the small town she's got to go there for three months i think it is and prove like she can do something with her life and all of this so her stepfather totally cuts her off she gets exiled to this small town and that's where she meets Brandon. And they don't get along at first, but then slowly but surely, they start to open up to one another. She starts to find out who she really is. She addresses some of their insecurities and their romance develops. And yeah, I just love this book. It was so good. She is so funny. The chemistry and the bands between these two is amazing. And honestly, this book is just so good. Like, I highly recommend this. If you're looking for a good romance, pick this book up. I can't believe I waited so long to read this. To be fair, I ordered this at work months ago, like last year, and I think I ordered it in the summer and it only came in at the start of this year because it keeps going out of print all the time for the UK because it's a US print. So it took a while for this to arrive, which is why I really didn't get a chance to read it until now. But I love this. I have an arc to hook, line and sinker, which is going to be the next book, which follows her sister Hannah. And I'm so excited for that one, which I will be reading in February. Spoiler for my February TBR. But yes, I absolutely adore this book. Cannot recommend this book enough. Honestly, one of my favourite romances I've ever read. Loved it. So yes, that does conclude all of the books that I read in January. I am hoping to read so much more in February, especially because it's Valentine's Day and I will be reading a ton of romance and romance is just so easy for me to fly through. So yes, I am really, really happy with what I did manage to read in January. I'm happy I'm off to a good start with my Goodreads goal and that I just had so many amazing books, so many four star and five star reads in January love that for the start of the year it's made me very happy <laughs> so yes i hope you guys did enjoy this video let me know if you would like me to continue doing wrap-ups and i will hopefully start doing monthly wrap-ups if you guys do want to see those so yes make sure to let me know in the comments let me know in the comments what you read in january how many books you read what your favorite book was i would absolutely love to know and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you did enjoy this video and if you made it this far please do leave a heart emoji in the comments my social media will be linked down below which includes my book talk my bookstagram my goodreads twitter my amazon wishlist everything is linked down below along with the link to my patreon where you can watch the spoiler filled reading vlog for king of battle and blood and also access other exclusive reading vlogs and videos a monthly buddy read and a discord so all of that is on my patreon if you would like to join but yes thank you guys so much for watching this video make sure you have the notification bell switched on if you're not subscribed please feel free to subscribe i upload videos every single week thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're all safe and well i hope you're reading lots of good books and i'll see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.